Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how Google Meet works within Google Classroom. So to start off, let's go to Google Classroom. I have an example classroom here set up. And you're going to see right here, it says generate link. So I'm going to click that. So this is the actual address for your Google Meet that was just created. This is the link. Right now, I'm going to keep this visible to students, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But I'll click Save. You can always go back in there and change visibility if you'd like. You can click these three dots and it does give you this manage option if you want to turn that off. So what I recommend for each class is you actually click this link to go in and start the Google Meet. This allows you to go in and try some of these features I'm going to show you in this video. And it also allows you to go in and adjust the settings for each class. Because if you have multiple classes, you will have to actually open the Google Meet for each class and click the meeting controls so that you can set it the way you want it to start off before the students actually enter. So my screen you're seeing right now actually looks exactly like the student's screen. And the students have this exact same box in the same location. And to join the meeting, they'll click that same button. Now talking about the visibility of this link, if it's clicked by the students right now, by default, they'll just go to a black screen that says waiting for host to start meeting. And it's just kind of spinning. So there really is no harm in keeping it visible. It doesn't really go anywhere for the students until you actually start the meeting. So how do you start the meeting? You're going to start the meeting exactly like the students would. You're going to click join. Now that we're in our meeting, if there are any students that were waiting to get in, they'll automatically pop in. The way it's set up is the students are considered to be invited into this meeting. And so therefore, once you start the meeting, they just kind of all pop in there at once. That's how it works through Google Classroom. There really is no waiting room when it comes to Google Classroom because the students are considered to be already invited into this Google Meet. Down in the lower right hand corner, you're going to see a lock icon. You're going to click that. That's the host controls. Then you have some features you can turn on or off. I would recommend that you turn off sharing screen, chat messages, reactions, and microphones to start. You can always turn those back on during the meeting. You can see that Google Meet also has breakout rooms, and I'll talk to you more about that in a specific video just on breakout rooms. But you can join a breakout room to customize its settings once you set that up and once you have actual students in there. So here's an important setting, and it's usually turned on by default, and that is host must join before anyone else. And that's what you want so that the students, if they click that link in Google Classroom, they can't actually go in there and be alone in that room virtually. You want them to have to wait for you to start the meeting to actually enter the Google Meet. So by default, it's going to be set to restricted here. And what that means is anybody with an email address outside of the Fleetwood Area School District would not go directly into the meeting. They actually pop up and it says that they're asking to join the meeting. So at that point, you can let them in one at a time. So one of the new features is attendance tracking. And what that does is it automatically generates an email and sends you the email with a Microsoft Excel list of all the students that were in that meeting and what the timestamp was when they entered and left the meeting, how many minutes they were in and things like that. So I'll show you what that looks like. I have one pulled up here that I did as a practice and you get an email that looks like this and then you can double click on the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. So you have to refer to your guidelines for your building as to how exactly to take attendance and what's required. Each building is a little different in how they're handling attendance for these Google Meets on a flexible instructional day, for example. So make sure you just double check with your building and your principals uh, what the expectations are. But at a bare minimum, this can give you a record of who signed into that meeting for some amount of time. Another new feature that's in here is the Q&A section. So let's go back up here and talk about the chat. The chat section in Google Meet is really either on or off. And if you turn it on and a student leaves a message that's inappropriate, I haven't found a way to delete that message. So it would stay, that message would stay up there in the chat, even if you turn the chat off throughout the meeting. So my recommendation is to keep the chat turned off and then maybe try this Q and A section, which allows you, it has this option right here. If I turn this on, it says hide each question until a host approves. So that's what I would do. If the students want to ask a question um, during a certain period where you're taking questions of that lesson, then I would turn this on and then I would make sure that I'm approving the questions that come through first and then the students can engage with that. Okay, next down here, there's the chat with everyone icon. Again, if you turn this on, anything that's posted by students, um, there's no approval process. It would just pop right up in that section right there. 
So just be aware that depending on the age of your students and the maturity level, you may choose to turn that on or off. Here's what it's gonna sound like when a student enters the meeting. So down here, you can look at the people that are in the meeting. And you can see right now that this microphone is off. So the student has control of whether they can turn their microphones on or off. And notice that their microphone is off. And the reason that it's off, and I can't actually turn it back on as the student, I'm on the Chromebook trying to do that. I'm not allowed to do that because if we go back to the host controls, remember we turn the microphones off. So if you want the students to enter quietly when you first start that meeting, I would recommend keeping their microphones off. And then at a certain point in that lesson, if you want them to participate or whatever, using their microphones, you would turn this back on. Once that's turned back on, if I close the host controls and go back down here to people, the microphone will still be off for the students unless they turn it on. So the students actually have control of whether it gets turned on or not. You can't turn it on and off for them. You can just control whether or not they're allowed to turn it on at all but they still have to make the decision to turn it on or off. So if I go on the Chromebook here and I turn my microphone on, you'll notice that the student's microphone is now on. You can see this represents the sound waves of the mic being on. I can click this little icon and I can mute that particular student. I can also go up here and mute all. So this is a quick way to mute all the microphones at once, or you can mute individual microphones right here. You'll also have other options over here in the three dots for each student. I'm going to go back over here to info. This is just the meeting info in case you need to share that. If a student's having trouble for some reason entering the meeting, that's the information they need to join. If for some reason they need to join with an email address that's outside of the Fleetwood Area School District, they can still do that. It would just be a notification that pops up saying that this address is trying to join the meeting. You just have to verify who that is before you let them in the meeting. Let's take a look at the middle controls here. This ends the call, so I'm gonna skip that for now. I'm gonna go here to the three dots. The three dots, you have a way you can change the layout and how it looks. You can go full screen, open picture in picture. That will be helpful sometimes when you're sharing your screen. It might be easier to do it that way. And apply visual effects is if you want a virtual background, you can choose those there. If I select that, there are a bunch that are available now. There's a raised hand button right here in the center, and if the student clicks that, I'll do that now, it will put a raised hand up for about 15 to 20 seconds. At that point, it automatically gets lowered. But over here, what you wanna do is click on open queue, and you can see if there are other students that have their hands raised, and you can lower the hand by clicking that button. That means that you've addressed that student's concern or question. In the center here, you have a present. This is how you would share your screen. And there are several different options. I'm gonna do a separate video on just presenting and different ways that you can do that. As you can see here, you can do it from a Chrome tab. You can do it from the window with all the tabs at once in the Chrome browser, or you're just your entire screen. You do have closed caption option right here. And for the closed caption, they're automatically gonna be coming up in English here. You can change the language over here. However, I have not been able to get that to work to be translated into other languages at this time. So hopefully in the future, we will see that where you actually get live translations. Uh, that would be great. That's very similar to what we see in PowerPoint. And hopefully Google will be able to catch up and, and get that to work. The last two controls are for video and audio. This is your microphone on and off and selection. And then you just have the same here for your video. The last thing you wanna do is end the meeting. And when you click this, it's very important that you end the call for everyone, because if you just leave the call, the students will be in the room by themselves. And also, I just want to let you know that if for some reason you accidentally close out of the Google Meet tab while you're hosting the meeting, go back to Google Classroom, click the link, and you'll go right back into the meeting. The kids don't automatically get kicked out if you close your tab. You'll just disappear temporarily, and then you have to go back in. So I'm going to click the end call for everyone button. So that'll wrap up this video. If you have any questions or comments, you can always email me at kbolendorf at fleetwoodasd.org. Until next time, have a great day.